Hi, I'm Anas, and today we are turning this into this. Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna showcase what I've been doing the last two weeks. What I've been doing is just juicing up the game a little bit, adding some sound effects, some visuals, and just making the game look and feel a little bit more alive. So let's jump right into it and I'll show you first of all the visuals. Now the first thing you probably will notice when you look at the game is the top bar, which I'm very happy with. You can see the death timer and if the hero is dead, they're grey. There's also, it showcases their ability and when they use it, it actually shows it on cooldown. It of course also shows how many kills they have and how many deaths they have. Sometimes, let's say a minion or tower kills the hero, uh, the la devs and kills won't line up, but you can always go into the home screen and here you can see who killed who. The next thing I kind of want to show you is this little attack bar. I wanted to have some sort of visual so you can actually see when the different things were attacking. And I think this works out pretty well. It's pretty easy to see it's an attack since it's a blade and uh, it just adds a lot to the game. I also of course added some visuals to the abilities. So for Fred he has an aura and you can see all of his allies that is within that aura gets this little shield which is basically a damage reduction. I think that works really well. And as you can see down here, he's now healing and he gets like small healing particles. We also added a death animation, so when something dies there's a little bit of a cloud. It's not much, I didn't want it to be too much. Another thing we did is we made the towers actually shoot projectiles. So now their attacks aren't like instantly, they actually shoot cannonballs at the enemy. Which is really cool, I like that. The same for the nexus. I also, very small thing you probably can't see always, but uh, the damage numbers over the heads actually have different variations to it. So if it's a critical, it's a little bit bigger, it's red, and if it's a block, then it's smaller and blue, and if it's a dodge, then it's white and also quite big. So I think that's pretty cool, and as you can see, there's also status effect over this guy's head, it's because he was slowed. Now moving on to the audio. Inside of our settings page, I did a little bit of tweaking and now it actually looks a little bit better. You can switch if you want windowed screen or borderless. And you can switch the different resolutions you want and if you go full screen it just goes back to the full screen. We have the master buzz, of course which changes everything. You can mute it and the whole sound goes down. And the music, also if you can mute and if it's muted and you move this, it actually works properly. I'm very happy with how everything works in here. We sadly don't have any ambient sounds yet, but it has been set up and all of these settings when you close the game is actually saved and launched the next time you launch the game. Very good, very nice. Now, I also added UI sounds, it's not much, but I'll show you. I'll turn it off so you guys can hear it a bit better. So, when you hover over things, there's this sound. And when you click something, ah, I think it's pretty satisfying. You might also notice that this actually sounds a bit different every time. And that's because we do it with random pitch, it's actually the same sound. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to sound effects. To make it a bit easier to hear, I'll take off the music, so it's just the sound effects. So as you can hear, something dies, a sound effect, and there's moving. This is the Nexus dammit <laughs> shooting sound. It's a little bit jarring, but it's fine for now. <laughs> it shoots pretty fast. Then you have attacking sound, and depending on what hero it is that attacks, it will be a different sound. I think it adds a lot, and it's just everything is just kind of coming alive now, which is really nice. I'll jump in and actually show you how we did these sound effects, because a lot of things going on. Now, for how we do the sound effects, I took heavy, heavy inspiration from Arimus. This is subject to change. Right now, it's a lot copied from what he did, but I do want to make it a little bit more scalable for my project, because we will be using a lot more sounds. I'll leave a link to his channel down below, so you can check him out, or check out the video. And uh, yeah, basically what it is, all of the different sound effects you want to add, you just put them into this enum list. And then there's some settings down here. And then he also did some more settings that makes sure that some sound effects you don't want to have too many of. So like walking sounds, I put a hard limit on that. So once 
there's already four walking sounds going, then there will not be another one. And that's just to make sure it doesn't sound too jarring. And uh, yeah, so how you even, like set up every sound effect is you have this scene called Sound Manager. As you can see, it is uh, basically just an array of these sound effects. And what you can do is you just go in, you add a new one. Let's say you, you had one more down here, ability or something. <laughs> I'll call it Apple. So you do a new sound effect, and then you can just choose it here. And then you just choose what sound you want it to be. And uh, that's basically it. <laughs> now when you need that sound in anything, like anywhere in any script, you can just call this function in here to either create it locally. So all of the sound effects is actually when they walk or something, you can actually hear if the sounds are coming from the right or the left, up or down. It's very cool. So that's all happened with this one. Or if you want it to be just in general in the game. So like if you win the game, you just want the sound to be playing like and then you could use this one. And these scripts can be called from any script at all. And the same with these sound effects. So it's really easy, super nice. The problem with the scalability for me is right now, like, let's see, I want to find the walking sound. I want to adjust something. It's like, is it this one? No. Uh, this one? No. Oh, yeah, it is this one. <laughs> well, okay, here it is. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's a little bit hard to find. I would love to have some sort of readability so you can see which is which. Also, if I add... Let's say I have game win, game loss, but I want a game to war sound. It would make sense for me to add it here, up here at the top. So like it would be up here, right? Uh, but the issue with that is once it's like that, then all of the sound effects after this has now been pushed. So if you now take uh, this one, like the sound effects no longer matches up. Uh, I'll take one that's a bit easier. So this is the pistol fire attack. Now it's the bubble auto attack. And that's because these all, once they're in this list, gets converted to an index number. So this would be 0, this would be 1, 2, 3, and so on. So once you change anything or add something above it, then the whole number system kind of goes up and it kind of ruins everything. So that means if I want to add any new sounds, they always have to go down at the bottom. And that kind of messes up some things. But you see now it actually... Uh, it's the same and it works again, but yeah. So that's something to keep in note and something I definitely want to look into and make it a little bit more scalable. For his game, he didn't have this many sound effects, but for this game, we're going to have hundreds of abilities with different sounds. We're going to have different attack sounds. It's going to be a huge library and having them all in a list like this and a list like this is just not the best. But I really love what he's like has done and the fact that Basically, when, if you want to add pitch, then you can add the pitch. You can add like how different each pitch have to be between every time. And if some sound effects are a little bit too loud, you can actually just lower them here. And yeah, it's, it's great work. Again, check out this video. It'll be in the description. I kind of want to talk a little bit about the future for this game and what I'm thinking. For the next video, I really want to work on achievements because I feel like there needs to be something to work towards. And with this achievement system, I'm hoping to also add... Since this is an idle game, it can be scalable. So I'm thinking like, for example, if you win five games, you get an achievement. And with this achievement, uh, you also get increase permanently extra loot every time you win, for example. And then it can also be 10 wins, 15 wins, 20 wins, and then... You just get better and better rewards as you go on. Uh, but I was hoping for some of you guys, maybe if you have any ideas of what could be a cool achievement in this game, something maybe uniquely that can only be possible due to this being like an idle mobile game, I would love to hear from you. And again, if you want to contribute to the project, honestly, anything can do. I need audio would be awesome. Like any visual stuff you think would be really cool. If you're like, 
I feel like these buttons, maybe, like, if they, they had a little bit of flair here or something, then feel free to send them my way or add it to the GitHub. It would love to see some more community <laughs> additions to it. Or, yeah, like, so you don't have to be necessarily coding to, to add to the project. Lastly, I just want to go through some of the minor bug fixes I've done. So there was an issue with the minions and their pushing state that, they were going to the nearest enemy and sometimes when like either enemy like we or the enemy had pushed down to the nexus like down around this area then the minions at the bot lane would try to target them but they couldn't walk up there so they'd just be stuck here and that was a big issue and uh but we did manage to fix it so now they actually only target anything that's on the same navigation layer as them so if anything is up here, but they're not touching like their navigation mask, then they're just gonna walk down here. And it works great. I'm so happy with how everything is turning out. It's so smooth. I would love for heroes to be able to actually like switch lanes a little bit more smooth than they are right now. Like every time now when they switch lanes, let's see this guy, for example, you want to say he goes top lane, he will always go through the base and then up. So yeah, but once I get the hang of that, it, I think the game is going to be so beautiful and like we can implement so much logic like like when the tower is here, like if he, like our hero is here and he wants to gank top, like we can make it so like, okay, maybe it's safer to go this route, you know, so it will take into perspective, are you going to go through anything? depending on if anything else is already in here. With the component system, it's just gonna, I feel like it's gonna be possible. <laughs> when I was working on this project and I had my old system before the component system, I didn't feel like I could do these things. But now, like in my head, I can see how I'm going to be able to code this function. It's not high on my priority list to do it because the game works now and it's kind of fun to see and it's kind of minimal, but it's just gonna make it so cool with all the functionality we're gonna have over here. The heroes, we could also, <laughs> I'm getting too excited here, but I talked with my brother and he get, got me a bit excited because we, we talked about different things you would be able to do. And he was like, it could be kind of fun if you can control your heroes a bit more. And I'm like, yeah, why can't you? So like at some point we'll be able to, you can select your heroes and then you can click and then they will walk there. Or you can click, and if you click on something, then they will attack that thing, or they will support that ally. You can also make that abilities don't automatically get used, and you have to use their abilities if you want to be like more like in the game. And so like with his abilities, like for example, this guy can stun. So if you don't have it on automatic, you can just keep it, and then as the enemy is almost low, you can choose to like use that stun on the enemy. <sighs> The future is looking so cool for this game and I'm so excited. Now lastly a little thing I added was uh, sometimes I misclicked the quick game button and it annoyed me that it just quit the game so now we have a are you sure you want to quit? And uh, yeah and that's all for this week. I want to keep the video a little bit shorter, a little bit more digestible. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one.